I'm Glenn Cerny, and welcome to the final program in a series at KRWG we've called A New Era of Excellence Profiles in Leadership. During the past two weeks, we've introduced much of the new leadership at New Mexico State University. It's really rare for a school to name a new president, provost, and three deans in less than a year. With the impact NMSU has on our communities, we thought it would be appropriate to find out who they are and where they see the institution headed. In earlier programs, we featured the new provost, Wendy Wilkins, and three new deans, Krista Slayton of the Arts and Sciences, Ricardo Hawkes with the College of Engineering, plus Michael Moorhead, the dean of the College of Education. It's been about three years between the departure of Michael Martin and the arrival of Dr. Barbara Couture as the president of New Mexico State University on New Year's Day 2010. Even after her arrival here, her first month was spent in Santa Fe working with the state legislators to find the cuts needed to balance the state budget. It truly was baptism under fire. However, her calm demeanor helped establish a sense of mission that even the talented interim presidents could not provide. A common greeting along with welcome to Las Cruces has been, please stay a long time. The appointment of Dr. Barbara Couture on November 19, 2009 was met with much applause in the Board of Regents Auditorium as she and her husband Paul made their way inside. Upon accepting the position that day, President Couture expressed her enthusiasm for the job. From the very beginning, as soon as I stepped foot on this campus, we knew this was the place for us. We met so many wonderful people who were dedicated to excellence in teaching, in research, in service and outreach to the state of New Mexico, and who had their eyes on the prize. They want this university, as I want this university, to be the absolute best it can be. The enthusiasm from day one carried across campus as President Couture laid out her plans to strengthen New Mexico State University's national standing. The university community gathered for the annual fall convocation on August 17th to celebrate much more than a new academic year. The convocation served as the official inauguration of President Couture as she announced her short and long-term vision for the university. That vision, as she shared, will be achieved through partnership. By completing this work, NMSU can indeed be the economic engine for New Mexico through lengthening and strengthening our research and economic development partnerships. After her inauguration in August, KRWG sat down with President Couture to find out more about her and where she would like to lead us in the future. President Barbara Couture, first of all, thank you for taking the time from an incredibly busy schedule. I'll get to that later, but uh, after, what, nine, ten months here, is it still okay to say welcome to Las Cruces? Oh, it sure is, and I have enjoyed being welcomed uh, day after day after day by the, the many friendly people in this community. Well, well, we'll get to Las Cruces in just a moment, but first of all, can you kind of tell us a little bit about uh, growing up, experience that shaped your life and set you in a position to become president of New Mexico State University? Well, I grew up in snow, and there's no snow here, so <laughs> I think that was a big shaper right there. But on a more serious note, uh, I had parents who really respected education, loved to learn themselves. My mother was a great reader. I even remember when I was a young child in the second grade when we were asked to uh, draw pictures of our mothers doing something at home and when other students were drawing pictures of their mother vacuuming or sweeping or doing the laundry, I drew a picture of my mother sitting in a chair reading. And that has made a huge impression on my life and I think has made a, a lifelong love of reading a part of my life too. You know, uh, that explains the English degree, and yes. I, I will admit I did get through Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> Moby Dick, I don't think I ever quite got to the end, but um, academic credentials, uh, school and degrees? Yes, University of Michigan, all the way. Uh, I got my bachelor's degree in English language and literature, uh, started to teach public school uh, English in the seventh, eighth, and ninth grades, went back for my master's degree in English language and literature, uh, got promoted in the public school to an assistant principal, and then thought, you know, maybe I'm an academic after all, and went back to the University of Michigan for my doctorate. 
it, it really becomes kind of an addiction, doesn't it? The it learning does. and everything. It does. And we should mention sitting here in the uh, art museum at New Mexico State yes. University, so you you are very familiar with the the art side of uh, education at the university. We've always loved the arts, both the fine arts and the performing arts. My husband and I have attended a number of art exhibitions. We've gone to many plays and performances, and we've actually done a little play acting and performing ourselves. So. We are great supporters of the arts. Well, since you mentioned the performing arts, let, let, let me deviate a little bit here, but talk about the excitement we had back in uh, early August with the groundbreaking in our new art facility, uh, performing art facility here on campus. I am absolutely thrilled that we are building a fine and performing arts center here. The design is beautiful. It's a great light to the community, welcoming them in to learn more about the student and faculty productions here at New Mexico State University. Of course, we have the wonderful Las Cruces Symphony that we have a wonderful attachment to, our great theater program, and the wonderful music performances that I know this community has come to expect from our faculty and students. You, you come here having played a very important role in the University of Nebraska and that in, incredible academic uh, institution that really serves the entire state. Um, what was it that, that got you to even start thinking about leaving uh, Lincoln and, and eventually coming to Las Cruces? Well, first of all, I have a great dedication to public higher education and want to make a difference and make our great public research universities continue to be great in this country. I had that opportunity, of course, in Nebraska in helping set academic direction, but the chance to take an institution like this with a powerful research program in engineering and other fields with a very diverse population that's committed to access for students, and of course that land-grant mission that allows faculty and students to outreach to the community, I could not resist that. And then there was the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I, trust me, having come from western Minnesota, I'm very sensitive to that. So I, I agree with you completely on that. But I've also got to point out, you really haven't gotten to enjoy a New Mexico winter in Las Cruces yet because when you were named president the first of the year, um, I, I think you were probably much, much more time in Santa Fe than in Las Cruces. That's exactly right. I spent a lot of time with the state legislature working on the budget for NMSU and I would suspect that this winter I'll be spending much time there again. And it's a little longer session, it so you've is. got two months it of is. it. Uh, can, can you reflect on that? I mean, you came in at a very turbulent time. Mm -hmm. The state having financial problems, no question about it. Um, I, I, I appreciated your attitude that, look, we're going to have to do something to help the state here. Now, we're going to fight for New Mexico State University and our funding, but trying to balance learning names of legislators, understanding mission, trying to shape the discussion for our legislators, I, I can't even begin to imagine the challenge of trying to grasp that in 24 hours notice. Well, I think our legislators and the great faculty and staff here at NMSU did a great job helping me do all of that. And one thing I found out about the legislators here is, first, they're very personable. They love this university. They love the state of New Mexico. And even when times are challenging, like they are now, uh, they have the best interests of the university at heart. And that made it easier to spend that great amount of time with them and talk with them about our story here. You know, I, I may not have been the best student, but I, I do occasionally take notes. So during your inauguration um, address, you, you listed several goals that, that you wanted. And, and number one on that list was to improve graduation rates um, and even presented a coin, a commemorative coin, to our incoming freshman class. Can you talk a little bit about the, the conversation you had with that incoming class and why graduation rates are so important to improve at New Mexico State? Well, graduation rates, of course, are important to improve throughout our state. We not only have a challenge of graduating students from our high schools, but we apparently have a challenge in graduating them from our four-year colleges, too. There are probably lots of reasons for that. Some of them are preparation that students have prior to coming to college. Some of them are financial woes that students have that make it important for them to stop out every now and then. But we can do a lot to help our students by letting them know we're there to support them and setting them on the right path. So I started a new tradition at New Mexico State University that I help 
hope to continue every year, and that is to give a, an address to the freshman class and give them some advice about how to start the year out right. We talked to them about uh, going to class, number one. I think that was the number one thing that made a difference for me in my success as an undergraduate, about getting to know their professors, about studying every day, and challenging them to keep their eye on the prize. That is graduating in what would have been their year of graduation, 2014. So we gave them a coin, a challenge coin, that we hope they'll keep in front of them as a token to keep that challenge in front of them and to keep that pledge to get their degree completed and graduate. You know, and help me out here because my understanding is, I mean, you have all these advanced play placement classes. We've got freshmen coming in with 30-some credits. It's not just a New Mexico State problem. This, this is a, a higher education problem. Um, is, is, is there anything unique about New Mexico State, you think, that, that makes attacking the problem different than perhaps at Nebraska or Michigan? Well, I think that we do have a population, if you look at our state statistics, that suggests uh, that more of our students do have financial difficulty. And it is uh, well known that when students have a secure financial uh, expectation for completing their degree in terms of having support, they can do a better job. Uh, we also know that uh, because they do have financial challenges, many of our students work. And one of the things we're going to work on is trying to find opportunities for students to work on campus because uh, research also shows that students who work on campus as opposed to someplace else also seem to stay more connected to their program. So I think the financial resources is uh, part of the problem. Uh, preparation for the university prior to coming here is perhaps part of the problem too. And we need to help our high schools address that. Can I dovetail that into the next goal that you identified? And, and I think one of the things that occurs with that financial security, if I can use that term for our students, is the ability to take advantage of opportunities. And one of the things you highlighted was for New Mexico State University to become uh, more of an international yes. uh, kind of university with, with curriculum and opportunities. Can we talk a little bit yes. about that? Yes. Well, New Mexico State University already has a great start. We have a number of collaborative uh, relationships with international universities, and we have students, uh, many of whom speak more than one language, so they have the opportunity to be successful abroad. And we also have industries in New Mexico that are increasingly becoming international industries, such as our pecan industry, which we know now sells uh, most of its product or a lot of its product to China and in fact we're now in the middle of working out potentially some new relationships with institutions in China. We also know that if a student has an experience abroad uh, that's going to make them uh, perhaps have that edge that'll make them a more valuable employee in the workplace where many of our industries in New Mexico uh, have an international presence. The, the next goal you uh, mentioned, and again, it, it, it works well because you were talking about pecans and the, and the work that our agricultural department here on campus, Lowell Catlett's group and uh, what John Bourne does with the extensions, but you, you've said that, that we need to be more active as an economic development catalyst mm -hmm. for the region. Uh, and, and I think that extends well beyond just agriculture, but since you mentioned pecans, that became a, a good one. But I take a look at our engineering and the NASA relationships and some of the grants we've just gotten in the last mm -hmm. few months. Do you start to see that goal starting to gain some traction in, in meeting it? Well, as you know, I set out as a theme for my inauguration uh, the beginning of a new era of excellence through partnerships. And that includes uh, uh, partnerships in our research operations. I think that uh, states more and more are expecting of their research universities not only to do basic research and perhaps research that has practical application, but to extend that work in partnership with industry or in partnership with government, in partnership with other institutions to create a base for economic development. We have a great start here in the development of the Arrowhead campus, which does offer uh, classes and opportunities for people to become entre entrepreneurs and to start new businesses. And we, of course, now have the new Early College High School project on that campus, where we're going to be training students in high school not only to complete their high school degree, but get an associate's degree and perhaps go beyond and connect them with an industry that we hope to have located on that campus. So 
I think we're well on the road to creating a way that our university can interact with businesses and industries locally and beyond to start linking our research enterprise uh, to economic development here. And if that bridge can be made, it also leads into the next one that you mentioned, increase endowment and alumni giving. Yes. In October, the NMSU community celebrated the end of a seven-year fundraising effort dubbed the Doing What Counts campaign. It resulted in more than $256 million in pledges and donations to the University Foundation. The celebration was held during homecoming week to allow supporters to meet the people and programs at NMSU who have benefited from their support. During the campaign, more than 28,000 individuals, 3,500 businesses, and 150 foundations invested in the future of NMSU. The contributions received have gone on to support the creation of 13 new academic chairs, 18 professorships, 323 scholarship endowments, and 52 campus-wide name designations of classrooms and facilities. Despite the campaign's success in surpassing the original goal, President Couture has made it clear that more fundraising efforts like this are necessary in the near future to offset the decreasing amount of funding from state sources. Building a healthy endowment is one way to ensure that the university is at the top of its game. More and more public research universities are depending on endowments uh, uh, t and uh, the interest that is earned from them to do good things. Provide students with scholarships so they can attend school without financial stress, to provide endowed chairs for our faculty so we can attract the very best faculty here, perhaps uh, provide scholarships so that students can have that study abroad experience. Right now at New Mexico State University, we've started the path toward development, but we have a long way to go. I think there is a real will here, and I want to thank, of course, Nick Franklin and all of those in our advancement group for the great work they did in completing our first campaign toward the end of this semester. But we have a long road to hoe, and we need to increase our alumni giving to this great university so we can continue to do good things. You know, we've been pretty serious so far. Um, but you've had some fun on campus mm -hmm. as well and mm -hmm. have been very active in getting out, meeting with students. I was a little afraid to hand you a microphone today after the way you took the baton at the first football game directed to the band. I wasn't <laughs> sure you were going to get off, but, but <laughs> you and your husband Paul have been having some, some fun here as well. We have as well, and of course we love the band. Uh, I didn't play band when I was in school. I went to a school that didn't have a band, but I went to a summer band at a public school nearby. So it was great to get up there, take the baton, and actually uh, conduct our very own band. And uh, we both love music. We both, in fact, take piano lessons and uh, enjoy doing that as a hobby. So that was a great opportunity for me. And I've heard that I get to do that if I want at every game. I'm going to take that opportunity too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get you around too many microphones in, in, in that case because the same would hold true here. You, you were at the football game and, and there's been some conversation about the role of athletics mm -hmm. at New Mexico State. How do you see it fitting into our, our campus and our campus activities? Well, New Mexico State is a great land-grant research university. It's a comprehensive university. And comprehensive institutions often do have athletic programs, too. In every state where I was at a successful research university, Wayne State in Detroit, Washington State in Pullman, Nebraska in Lincoln, um, every one of them had an athletic program that had some contribution to the university. The two land grants in particular had athletic programs with football teams, of course, that competed against uh, other state great uh, land grant institutions, too. Uh, our students tend to, uh, I think, identify with the athletics program as a way of generating community spirit, and our alumni certainly do, too. But like all things, uh, we have to put things in perspective and in balance. And at this university, while I'm president, our academic program will always be job one. I, I was have to note that you, you look very good that you'd gotten rid of that strange bright red color that you've <laughs> been wearing for how long and, and we're wearing something a little more crimson. Yes, we're turning to crimson here. We're retiring red for, for quite some time, especially since we know it's very popular up north. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, what's surprised you? I mean, you, you've been here, you're essentially coming up on a year mm -hmm. of being here. Um, what surprised you about New Mexico State University? I think that it's uh, 
We know that we've had some real challenges here with resources over the last few years. And what I've seen here is a pretty indomitable spirit among our faculty and staff. There are some who are, of course, disappointed with uh, having to tighten our belts and not being able to hire as many faculty as we would like. But they're hanging in there, and they want this university to be great. I'm going to be depending on them to give me good advice about how we can continue to do that. And uh, I am, I guess I wouldn't say surprised, but pleasantly pleased at the spirit that people have maintained here, even in challenging times. I'm going to give you a bit of a reprieve with most of the other deans that we've interviewed. I've said, you know, what, what do you think will happen in, in a year? I, I'm going to not ask the question because we've already intoned that you're coming up to a year, but as you greet the graduating class of 2011, what, what would you like to look at and say, I'm proud that we accomplished this? Is there something you're looking to really make an impact on come May, by May? I think I'd like to be able to say that I'm proud that we accomplished uh, for our students a sense that they have been extremely well supported by their university through support programs that help them in their academic work, through advising them so they get through their academic program with success, and through assuring that we're doing all we can to get them toward graduation. I'd like to be able to say to our faculty that even in times that are challenging budgetarily, we've created an academic focus for the university that allows us to still build excellence here. And with their help and their continued dedication to teaching and research, we'll get there. If you had time to think back on your inauguration and what that experience meant to you and the number of people that, that came out and, and were cheering for you, Again, it was a wonderful example of how supportive this community is and how, how many people want to see this institution succeed. I had nothing but good wishes from ev everyone who attended, from my family members, of course, of which there were many here, uh, to students, faculty, alumni, business uh, folks, all of them saying how much they love the university, how much they hope that I succeed, how much they hope that New Mexico State University succeeds. And I think uh, one of the more pleasant things about the inauguration uh, was uh, to have the sense that, that our community got to see our faculty uh, at their best by seeing them rewarded uh, for their accomplishments in teaching uh, and advising, uh, which was part of this inaugural ceremony. Uh, it really let the community in on the terrific work that those faculty are doing for our students. You know, one of the things that struck me, um, which I think spoke highly of, of your leadership at Nebraska, were the number of folks from Lincoln mm -hmm. that were wishing you well. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I did have many who came uh, to uh, uh, send me greetings or, or send me good wishes, baskets of flowers, and uh, of course they have an academic year uh, going on there too, and uh, not many could come down, but certainly uh, I heard from many, many people from the University of Nebraska and from Washington State as well. Well, first of all, again, welcome to New Mexico State University, and I'm going to ask you to Please stick around for a while so we can get some consistency of, of leadership and, and accomplish the things that you've set out so very early here. And I'm going to hope to do things so that you'll want me to stick around for a while because that's, both what, that's what both Paul and I would like to do. We love it here. It, it sounds like we have a deal then. President right. Couture, thank you so much thank for you, taking Glenn. the time. Thank you, Glenn. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. New Mexico State University President Barbara Couture. This concludes our series of programs, A New Era of Excellence, Profiles in Leadership. As with any program, there's a long list of people that need to be recognized for their contributions. Obviously, at the top of that list are Dean Slayton, Hawkes, and Moorhead, along with Provost Wilkins and President Couture. The KRWG Special Production Unit needs to be acknowledged for taking the time to shoot and edit these profiles in the middle of an extremely busy Aggie Vision schedule. Most important, my thanks to you for continued support of KRWG and for watching A New Era of Excellence, Profiles in Leadership. I'm Glenn Cerny. Thanks again for joining us.